Good morning, Luther Memorial. Good morning, morning, four cars outside. (laughs) We give thanks to God for being gathered together both inside and out on this third Sunday of Easter. As we continue in these 50 days of this Easter season, we are so grateful to God for our risen Christ, for the signs of new life all around us. We give thanks for God's faithfulness. Just a few announcements, everyone. We just got to finish having Ashley Teton Callahan. She's right here in the middle over here. She gave a fantastic session for us, for our adult session, What Happened to Us in This Pandemic. If you weren't able to join us, it actually is going to be online. And I believe, Nick, will it be on our YouTube page? Yes, it will be. So please do watch it. It was excellent. Shared with us some good statistics and just that recognition of what we're feeling and what we have lived in something we never have before. So thanks to Ashley. And next week, we'll have our second session with her and invite you to join us as well. Just a reminder, keep walking, everyone. Keep turning in those walking miles so we can get to Texas and back and give a dollar for every mile to the disaster relief of what happened to them in that deep freeze that happened in January. And we even told our confirmation kids that for every mile they can get a service hour and many are in track, so it's good news. Also, everybody, a reminder that this week on April 22nd is our Syracuse Cleanup Day. It's a joy that that hits with Earth Day on the 22nd, and then the 24th is our Cleanup Day. So please do participate as you can as we celebrate and give thanks for how we care for our community together. Also, everybody, on Wednesday, Wednesday the 21st, I believe, is Professional Administrators Day. If you would so do, please do reach out to Hillary, maybe just in a call or even a prayer or even a thank you gesture. We are so grateful for her good work for our community. So please do if you have time. I believe everybody, that's all we have for announcements. I invite those inside to please stand as we take a few moments to quietly reflect and to confess our sins to God.
The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. On the count of three, we share the peace of Christ with outside by just saying, Christ, peace be with you. One, two, three. Christ, Christ peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Outside, please share the peace with us. I invite you all to turn to one another, sharing the peace of Christ with each other. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me, everyone, as we pray together the prayer of the day. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you all to be seated as we continue with the reading of God's Word. We first read Psalm 4. Please join me responsively as you see on the screen or on your bulletin in your car. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many of us who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you all to be seated, and I invite Lacey and all our children to come forward for the children's message.
Good morning. There we go. Hi, Grayson. Come on up. Come on up. Good to see everyone. Okay, so we're, oh, you're sitting right by me. He's doing great. Your dad's over there? Yeah. Oh, wow. And are you going to have a brother? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we are. Okay, well, thanks for coming up. It's good to see everyone. We'll go ahead and get our PowerPoint started. One of the things we're going to talk about today is the history of telephones. History of phones, okay? So in 1876, Alexander Graham Bell invented something that he wanted to talk through wires. And that was his first phone. So he kind of spoke through it. He didn't hold it up to his ear, but he just spoke through it, kind of like this. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is a phone that my husband and I, we actually had in our first house. It was just an antique that was on the wall. But what you did was on the left-hand side there, you took that black handle and you'd speak through it and you'd say to the operator, I want to call Pastor Sarah, Sarah Cordry. And then what they would do is they would connect you to speak to that person. So you didn't dial a phone number, you just actually were connected by an operator. Okay, next one. This is just one I thought that was pretty neat. This is a, called a candlestick straight dial automatic electric phone. Very fancy. <laughs> next one. This is one that might be more familiar to a lot of us. This is called a rotary phone. And I remember picking up the phone and then you would have to dial the numbers. So I wanted to show you kids this. I don't have a rotary phone, but this is, has anyone seen a phone like this? You guys have seen this? How do you, does anyone know how to use it? McKenna, can you show me? Very good. So you pick it up and then you dial the numbers. We'll go to the next slide here. Jenna actually had a lot of fun playing with that. Oh, it might be a slide later, but okay. 1973, the first cordless phone began. And what was cool about this phone is it didn't have the cord. So you could actually walk around your house with the phone. Okay, next one. Where's my purse here? There's Jenna. She had a lot of fun playing with it. Now I have another question. Do you guys know what this thing is? What is this? A phone book. Very good. No one knew what it was in our first, our 8 o'clock service. Yes, this is a phone book. So in order to find someone's phone number, we had to look up the town. So I usually called my friends in Cook, Nebraska. You look up Cook, and then you look up the last name, and that's how you'd find their phone number. Pretty cool, isn't it? We don't really have to use phone books today, do we? Bag cell phone. Anyone have a bag cell phone? No. Yes, yes. So this was during my teenage years, and I remember we could take the bagged cell phone with us if we were going out, but we could only use it in an emergency. So that's what a bagged cell phone looks like. And now we've got all kinds of different phones. Does anyone know what this one is? Liliana. A flip phone. Yes. A flip phone. You bet. You bet. Yes. Your, your grandma has a flip phone? Oh, your papa used to. That's right. That's right. It broke. Oh, I know. Well, this was my flip phone back in 2003. Look how tiny it was. It was so small. And you'd flip it up, and then you would dial the phone number and push send, and that's how you would talk to people. So phones have changed a lot, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. So as we can see, the telephone has evolved with time and technology. 
But as we have seen, um, with time and technology, you know, we've had all different kinds of phones. So I generally get a new phone about every four to five years. Yeah, in today's gospel, Jesus rose from the dead, and he was visiting the disciples. So this is right after Easter. He rose from the dead, and he was talking to the disciples. At first, they were scared as they saw Jesus die, and they knew he no longer lived as a human. But then, what did Jesus do to prove his identity? Did anyone hear that part? He showed his hands, right? His hands and his feet, which had the holes from the the nails on the cross. Um, But yet they still had a hard time believing it was Jesus standing in front of them, not as a ghost, but as a true human being. So then Jesus ate fish and bread and proved to them that, yes, his body and spirit truly was who he was. And Jesus then said, you are witnesses to these things. When he said this, he reminds the disciples that they were witnesses to all the miracles he performed. They witnessed his suffering and death, and now they witnessed him standing before them after he had rose from the dead. So one of the big questions we may have as Christians is how do we really know this happened? How do we know? Is there a book that might teach us these things? Do you know what book that might be? The Bible. Exactly. The Bible. Yes, this is our Spark Bible that we use in Sunday school. Yes, the Bible. So we've got lots of different versions, but the Bible's teachings are still all the same. The Bible is a library of 66 books with teachings, stories, and God's word, which has been passed down from generation to generation, and the Bible has never changed. Did you know that? Noah's Ark is still the way Noah's Ark that I learned when I was a kid. So Jesus, he instructed his his disciples to go and teach the good news, share God's words with others. But did the disciples have phones to call people? Could they text message? No. What did they do? They did exactly what we're doing right now. They talked to people. They met. They had fellowship. They talked to everyone they saw, and they talked about Jesus. So all the material stuff we have today, like the cell phones I talked about, will have a short lifespan. Toys, hairstyles, clothes, the types of vehicle we drive. But what remains constant and will always stand true are the teachings of the Bible and God's love for us. Please go ahead and join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you for the disciples who shared everything they saw and learned from following Jesus. Please help us to do the same. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining. You may all have a seat, everyone. Thanks for coming up. At the first the service we had, Lacey asked what the phone book was, and one child said, the Bible. <laughs> it was to us back then, wasn't it? <laughs> Jesus is the body of Christ in the flesh and blood, appearing to us just as we are with his approach of grace. We, we are the body of Christ in the flesh and blood, appearing to each other and other neighbors as they are, as with Christ's approach of grace. In the flesh and blood. Oh, dear ones, what a gift it is now to be in the flesh and blood. And we know that was such a gift of grace to us this last Easter morning, just two weeks ago, with the rays of sunshine coming up from the east, the warm early morning breezes. We got to appear to each other in the flesh and blood, in physical appearance, to worship our risen, resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
we got to greet each other face to face in person, wounds and all from this last year with complete joy. That together we are the living body of Jesus Christ resurrected from the tomb of the pandemic quarantine. Now don't get me wrong, dear ones. Please hear me, I am truly thankful to God for the blessings God gave us as our congregation this last year. The radio transmitters, our drive-in worship services, Zoom calls, YouTube live streaming like we're doing right now. And I continue to praise God for such things because we still need them as we live in this pandemic. But after a year of isolation and computer and phone screens and windshields, the yearning of our hearts to be gathered in the flesh and blood happened from the technical to the mechanical to the living physical. We truly are living in resurrected life in these Easter encounters, which proves to us, dear ones, we will always be the kind of people who are in the flesh and blood because our risen Lord is the in the flesh and blood person of God. Jesus is the in the flesh and blood person of God because he physically appears. He appears to the women at the tomb, to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and now as we are today to the rest of the disciples who are in Jerusalem. Jesus makes such resurrection appearances over and over to show us that he is not an abstract behind the screen or windshield kind of savior who's at a distance separated from us. Rather, he is the living physical being in the flesh and blood with his scars and all like Lacey shared, who comes to us right now, wherever we are, however we are, just as he came to those in the Gospel of Luke we read. Right here in this Gospel we find the women at the tomb who are just terrified. We find the disciples on the road to Emmaus who are just confused about all that has happened, and we find the disciples back in Jerusalem who are startled and terrified, still disbelieving and wondering, as they think, frankly, they thought they saw a ghost. In each of these flesh and blood physical encounters, Jesus invites them to touch his hands and his feet with his wound, and today in this third encounter of which we read in Luke, he eats fish in front of them, just to simply show how physical his body still is. And then he speaks with them, with what they have already in them familiar, the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms. As he encountered each and every one, where and how they are, Jesus opens their minds to understand as he approaches them with such grace. Jesus' approach to the confused and the terrified is so important for us to note today, dear ones, by what he does not do first, and second, by what he does do. As we first note, Jesus does not reprimand, he does not rant. He doesn't send out a blanket statement while living in the abstract or being behind a screen or at a distance, putting just a forward, a social media post. He, as we secondly note, approaches with grace, with an invitation to touch and see, with an invitation to meet others with what is already familiar to them so they may understand and have their minds open. Almost 25 years ago, I truly believe that Jesus gave me an invitation to touch and to see in a way I had never experienced before. Having traveled with a small group from our church to El Salvador in Central America, where we got to see and live in the small village of Los Amates, our group was invited by the villagers to touch, to see, 
to enter into the caves where they had to hide. They hid during their country's civil war in the 80s and early 90s. These villagers also then invited us to touch and see the wounds in the sides of their church building, the deep gaping holes that were caused by bombs that rendered it useless and unsafe. On hill, on hill which looks like angel in our language, on hill who was leading us shared how terrified they were by their own military, how confused they were by their own civil war. Yet after a moment of pause while on hill did wipe that tears of that incredibly emotional memory he shared, he confidently said, but, but Jesus was there with us. I know, because I could actually feel him right there against us inside of that cave. What exactly on hill felt, I have no idea. But I like to imagine on hill felt the physical flesh and the blood presence of Jesus Christ right there as he felt his brothers and sisters skin and breath and heartbeat as they were so tightly crowded in with one another in that cave. Jesus was the body of Christ in the flesh and blood appearing to them as they were terrified and confused. Then they were the body of Christ in the flesh and blood, appearing first to one another back then, and then years later to us, so we could have our minds opened and could come to understanding. To this day, whenever I hear about refugees at the border seeking to escape whatever oppression they have faced, I always think of Onhill and those villagers the cave and their church. I thank God for On Hill and those villagers because like Christ, they approached us, these visitors who had no clue, no understanding with such grace so that we could then go forward and live in that grace with them as the body of Christ as they witness to Christ's presence amongst them. Jesus is the body of Christ in the flesh and blood, appearing to us as we are with Christ's approach of grace. We, therefore, are the body of Christ in the flesh and blood, appearing to others as they are with Christ's approach of grace. Dear ones, I truly believe that Christ's resurrection, the timing of Easter Sunday morning, could have not come at a better time as we needed to feel the presence of each other as even by hearing the honks of the horn outside now we sense and know we are together and now I believe we truly need the timing of Jesus resurrection appearance because now just like the disciples after we're still wandering confused perhaps we're startled some terrified but most definitely wearied, experiencing what we have experienced through pandemic, the racial injustices, other senseless shootings, including in Omaha now, just in the last few days, and definitely the political times. All these have taken a deep, deep toll on us, as Ashley has shared with us in our adult forum and will again next week. As we are, everything we felt and now are feeling, Jesus appears to us in the flesh and blood with his approach to grace. He may not ask for fish this time, but he does ask you to eat. He asks you to eat the bread and drink the wine, that you as the body of Christ may show the flesh and blood of him as you are the body of this Christ, body of Christ going forth in this world with Christ's approach to grace. Maybe for you going forth looks like this. Sitting down and visiting with one of our local law officers where they are in these difficult days in their profession where they so much want us to see the good they do and the way they love our community. Baby, for you, this looks like turning the news off 
and going to go visit a friend or an acquaintance who is a different race than you, who can tell you stories of their lives to help your mind be open so you may understand what they experience in those racial injustices that they or their loved ones experience. Or maybe for you, this is noticing that older person like our cousin Sue did the other day as she reflected in Facebook. She wrote, this is heavy on my mind tonight. At work today at the art gallery, I helped an older gentleman buy a gift for his son. He got out and gave me his credit card and as I was wrapping his gift, I noticed him looking at a worn photo of a woman in his wallet. He just pulled the photo out of the plastic clear cover and gently held it in his hand. When I gave him his package, he put that photo back in and I asked if that was his wife. He got misty and said, yes, she died a week ago and we were married for over 50 years. He said he was still in shock and it was tough. I could tell, she shared, I could tell getting out and buying a gift alone for their son had to be hard for him navigating a new normal. I told him he was so welcome to come back anything, not to have to buy anything, but just come and talk and chat if he ever needed to. I went home with a heavy heart that night, thinking of the love and sorrow I saw in his eyes. Dear ones, this is Christ's approach of grace that comes to you in the flesh and blood of the body of Christ, you. You, the body of Christ. As Christ says to his disciples, Christ now says to you, you are witnesses of these things. And all of God's people say, Amen. Today, everyone, we'll sing our song of the day, Travelers on the Journey, and we'll also receive our offering. As many know, we aren't passing the offering plate, but if you do have your offering, just gesture to the ushers and they'll come to you with the plate.
Let us boldly confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate of the holy spirit and the virgin mary and became truly human for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the, by the power of the risen Christ, let us come before God with all our joys, our concerns, our prayers, and our praises. Living God, in the midst of this Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we are encountered by your approach of grace in these scriptures, so that we, your church, may be your body in this world, sharing that approach of grace for all for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, like the master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. As we celebrate and give thanks for our earth on this earth day, move us to be part of the healing of your creation where it is in need of restoration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all the nation's hunger and thirst for your righteousness, Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer our hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and those in distress. We lift up before you especially the areas that have been affected by shootings, where the racial injustices and protests continue to be difficult. We ask you, Lord, to comfort the families who have lost loved ones and for those who are affected in the law enforcement. We pray, Lord, for you to grant for all people your compassion and to nurse them back to health and wholeness. We pray especially, Lord, for your healing touch for Steve and Nina Jean, for Robin and Marilyn, and for all those that we name before you in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God as a parent, you have given us such love and forgiveness and grace that we shall be called children of God. Reveal yourself to us that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in your mutual love and the bold witness to which you call us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ our Lord, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your heart, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty. 
beauty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Lamb of God who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. communion before you preparing to receive it i will speak the words of institution and will pray the lord's prayer after which i'll instruct you to receive the elements in the night in which he was betrayed our lord jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, upon this bread and this wine that is gathered in these holy spaces together, that we may continue to be strengthened to be the body of Christ and to share your ways through your approaches of grace, love, and forgiveness. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. I invite you all to take your wafer or bread before you, holding it in your hand. The body of Christ given for you. Please receive. Amen. Please take your cup before you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please receive. Amen. For those of you who have young ones who do not yet receive, please mark them with the cross of Christ on their forehead. Jesus' love is with you now and forever. Amen. And today as we're live streaming, we, live streaming, we pray this prayer for those of you with us online. Lord Jesus, we know you are truly present with your Son, we thank you as we long for our souls to be gathered. We know those worshiping with us virtually are brought together with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Come to those who are gathered at home. Cleanse and strengthen them with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let them never be separated from you. Amen. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Living God, you have greeted us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us. 
risen to new life with you, send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord, amen. amen. I ask you to please rise to receive the blessing. The blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage. Amen. We join together singing our sending song, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. ushered out. 